Greetings, slaves of the dark side, vague and powerful Jedi of the light, and vicious mercenaries of the galaxy, and welcome back to our database inside our archives. I have been expecting you. The Star Wars Galaxy is home to many of the most powerful beings to ever grace not only the Star Wars Galaxy, but the fictional universe in general, with the Jedi, Sith, the Gods of Mortis, the Bendu, the Force Priestesses, the Bedlam Spirits, the World Razor, and many other beings such as Dirge, who possess no Force sensitivity at all, leaving their mark on the Star Wars Galaxy, a ruthless and oppressive regime that displays their immeasurable power in not only the Star Wars, but also the fictional universe. It has been a long contested debate. Who is the most powerful Star Wars character? Which dark side or light side entity reigns supreme over all others? Which being, devoted to the Force, or possibly more without a Force sensitivity at all, has the ability to rise up in absolute triumph over the remainder of their peers? Well, today, my friends, we shall be exploring just that, deducting the top 10 most powerful Star Wars characters of all time. Just a quick spoiler alert, this will not include godlike entities such as the World Razor, the Ones of Mortis, and the Wills, as I will make my own video covering their immense, unmeasurable power. With that out of the way, Acolytes, all you must do is ascend to the rank of Master now, and strike down the subscribe button as you enter our archives yet again and journey across the galaxy. Who is the most powerful Star Wars character? Coming in at the number 10 position, we have the firstborn child of Han and Leia Solo, Darth Kytus. Darth Kytus, formerly known in his Jedi attire name as Jason Solo, was the ruthless Dark Lord of the Sith who originally fell to the seductive allure of the dark side out of fear of another Sith Lord known as Darth Kray. Darth Kytus possessed immeasurable power capable of contending and defeating in a duel with Grandmaster Luke Skywalker, the most powerful Jedi of all time. Darth Kytus was a Sith that truly scorched his mark across the Star Wars galaxy, being able to be the pre preeminent Sith Lord before Darth Prey and after Palpatine. Darth Kytus was able to duel with Jaina Solo and even his parent, Leia Organa Solo, and def even defeat his sister, proving that despite them being formed with the same force sensitivity and potential, his power still eclipsed that of his sister's. Upon becoming a Dark Lord, Darth Kytus gained an immeasurable extent to his power, becoming a nigh undefeatable foe to anybody but Grandmaster Luke Skywalker, Jaina Solo, and few other beings such as Darth Krayt and a reborn Emperor of Palpatine, oppressing a tyrannical regime across the galaxy. Darth Kytus was eventually killed by his sister Jaina Solo over Coruscant, marking the end of a dark and tyrannical time for the Star Wars galaxy and marking the end of a truly powerful and astoundingly impressive and oppressive Dark Lord. But coming in at the number 9 position, we have Exar Kun. Exar Kun, widely considered to be one of the powerful Sith Lords to ever live. Exar Kun is most notably and famous for being the creator and founder of the double-bladed lightsaber. Born many thousands of years before the events of the Clone Wars, the Battle of Yavin, and the Phantom Menace, Exar Kun was possibly the best, or in the top three greatest lightsaber duelists of all time, using his one-handed double-bladed saber staff in order to completely overwhelm and decimate his opponents with a brutal savage strike. Exar Kun was able to contend with the most powerful members of the Jedi Order, having the ability to duel and outduel nearly anybody in the Jedi Order at the time. It was considered that he was the most powerful Sith of his time, with the exception of Vitiate, Revan, and possibly even Nihilus, the most powerful Sith Lord of all time. Exar Kun was handy with the Force, with a midichlorian count ranging from 19,400 to perhaps even higher than this. He had the ability to produce very dangerous and ecstatic Force lightning that could rip the flesh and shear off the integrity and power of the victim. Despite all his power and accolades, he was still defeated, but went on as a Force spirit and dark side nexus to plague Luke Skywalker's Jedi Order over 4,000 years after the events of his physical demise, 
despite his power. He could not, as he admitted, stand up to the full force of the fully assembled Jedi Order if they came to defeat him. But coming in at the number 8, and just skimming up against Exar Kun, we have the only duelist that I consider to be superior, Tulak Horde. Tulak Horde, also known as the Lord of Hate, and Master of the Gathering Darkness, was widely considered to be the greatest lightsaber duelist to ever live. Darth Revan's master, Darth Treya, also known as Kreya, agreed with this sentiment, believing that Tulakor was the greatest lightsaber duelist of the old masters, where many true lightsaber duelists still live. Tulakor possessed immeasurable alchemy and Sith magic abilities, able to create horrifying illusions. It was even stated he broke the siege single-handedly laid down by the Jedi on the Sith Citadel, single-handedly breaking through their ranks. Over a thousand Jedi perished in these battles, and it was acknowledged and widely considered Tula Kord was a responsible number of many of them. Despite his immense power and foresight and alchemy abilities, he eventually died by being backstabbed by his own apprentice in the midst of a battle. Despite his cunning charisma, his power, and dark side hate, and swirling dark side nexus swirling around him, he was unable to foresee his apprentice would betray him, stabbing him in the back during the midst of a duel, with the apprentice even commenting and stating that Tula Horde was no Sith that no one of that time could challenge, and that no matter what happened, he would never be able to live up to the oppressive and nigh unstoppable might of his master. Tula Horde was one of the greatest duelists, but cannot compare to the likes of Yoda, the supreme avatar of the light, the most impeccable, implacable force the darkness had ever known, as the Revenge of the Sith novelization states. Grandmaster Yoda is widely considered to be one of the most powerful light side wielders in all of Star Wars lore. Being over nine centuries old at the time of his death, Yoda had 800 years of Jedi training, training Jedi for over 800 years. His lightsaber skills were such he was able to defeat and it best the Makashi Master, one of the greatest duelists ever to live in Count Dooku, in the Battle of Geonosis, when Dooku was at his pretty much peak in lightsaber dueling from Dark Side Augmentation. He was also able to contend with, and someone to even say disarm, the Dark Lord of the Sith Darth Sidious, one of the most powerful Sith Lords of all time, in a lightsaber duel but then contend with him in force abilities. However, Sidious did get the other upper hand. Yoda was able to direct and redirect two separatist ships, however, not to sell him short. He did make one of them change direction, allowing it to move off course. Yoda remains the Grand Master of the Jedi Order long after his death, and is one of the most powerful Jedi to ever live. He even went on to mentor Luke Skywalker, and mentored nearly every single Jedi in the entirety of the Order, being the sword master teacher to Jedi such as Dooku and Mace Windu. This truly states and sentiments why Yoda deserves to be implanted into this spot. Yoda died with all the wisdom of the Jedi had accumulated over 900 years and truly is ridiculously powerful. Coming in at the number six position, we have Revan, the Dark Lord of the Sith, the Jedi, and turn something more. Revan was a tyrannical and nigh unstoppable opponent, largely considered to be the chosen one of the Old Republic era, being the predecessor to Anakin Skywalker in more ways than one. He was able to use tyrannical force storms that could turn dark counselors to ash, could use teleportation, and rift himself across planets at whim. Revan was a supreme lightsaber duelist and military tactician, commanding many military generals and warfares during the Mandalorian Wars. As a testament to his immense lightsaber dueling prowess, he was able to duel Mandalore the Ultimate and eventually defeat the Mandalore, the most powerful Mandalorian of all time, and defeat him. Revan was able to contend with the Sith Emperor Vitiate, but his most incredible accolade and impressive feat was unquestionably he was able to funnel both sides of the Force, both the Dark and Light, in union, uniting in absolute oneness to contend with, and some would say, be the superior of Emperor Vitiate, one of the most powerful Sith Lords of all time. However, Revan was defeated. Revan was able to use Tutaminus to absorb Darth Nyrus's Force Lightning, had the ability to use telekinesis to throw boulders and buildings around like child's play. He even went on to marry and have a relationship with one of the most powerful Jedi of all time in the form of Bastilla Shan. 
and ter- terrifying and fierce combatant. Raven remained the prodigal knight up until his death and wonders with the force in the end of Vitiate's lifespan. But coming in at the number five and kicking off the really, truly powerful combatants on this list, we have Darth The sole commander and leader of the one Sith Armada, we have Darth Kray. Darth Kray, the bounty hunter, the Jedi Master, and finally the Dark Lord of the Sith. Darth Kray was believed to have done everything in all of Star Wars lore, being a bounty hunter, a Tusken Raider like his father before him, defeating Orising in a lightsaber duel. Het's force powers were such he could contain someone in force lightning without harming them in the slightest. He could turn his powerful enemies to ash and was even able to predict and foresee shadow points before they even accomplished the feat and was able to appear. Darth Krait's telekinesis feats was such that he was able to utterly decimate Darth Rylock in a lightsaber duel, using the force to augment his speed. He was able to pioneer the ability of dark transfer, resurrecting himself and augmenting his power in the dark side of the force tenfold, allowing him to become immeasurably more powerful than he was before. This is a tremendous accolade, as for many of his long years, he was stated to have lived many lifetimes, he was plagued by the Yuzong Vong parasites. Despite this, he still went on to phase the 100,000-year-old Eldritch Entity and Dark Side Abomination Abeloth, who was one of the only people Grandmaster Luke Skywalker ever in his entire existence feared, and was able and eventually killed by Cade Skywalker in a blur of motion. Had Swordmaster skills, he killed thousands of opponents since the Clone Wars, proving his spot on this list even more so. Coming in at the number four position is what many people assume to be the most powerful Sith Lord of all time. We have Darth Sidious. Darth Sidious is a truly terrifying and powerful opponent to behold on the battlefield. With his sword master skills, having mastered all seven forms of lightsaber combat, he was able to duel and utterly dominate and toy with the combined might of Darth Maul and Savage Opress during the Clone Wars. Able to contend with Grandmaster Yoda, although his sword master skills were lacking in this duel. His force abilities in Legends were even more horrifying and terrifying to behold for any Jedi or Sith. Luke Skywalker claimed him as the most powerful Sith Lord to ever grace the Star Wars galaxy, capable of generating hyperspace wormholes and force storms that had the ability to absorb, eat, and devour entire starships and Republic ships, including they had the ability to utterly destroy planets and ravage their surfaces. Darth Sidious had force lightning, and at the peak of its power could instantly vaporize the most powerful beings of all time. It only took the combined might of Leia and Luke Skywalker, united to the Force in absolute oneness, to defeat him in Legends continuity. And later, the combined might of every Jedi and deceased Jedi in all of Star Wars history condemned his spirit to chaos to ensure that he would never return once again to ravage the Star Wars galaxy. Palpatine is arguably and unquestionably the most successful Sith Lord of all time, being the only Sith Lord in all of Star Wars lore to accomplish the Sith's regime and ultimate goal to destroy the Jedi. However, he cannot match up to his predecessor. Coming in at the number three position, we have Darth Vishian, the immortal Emperor of Zakul, the Sith Emperor, the Eternal Emperor, and Valkorion. Tenebrae, Vishia. This Sith is known by many names. His power was such he was able to utterly dominate and toy with Revan, throwing him around his throne room using telekinesis, having the ability to cartoon himself with dark side force abilities, being able to block flamethrowers and even more powerful lightsaber strikes from his son Arkan. He lived for over 1,430 years, oppressing a tyrannical regime for over a millennia, holding on to the Imperial throne. He was even more skilled at dominating the minds of his opponents than Palpatine, dominating the mind of Revan, Malik, and some of the most powerful Jedi alive, toying with them. He also was able to toy with the combined might of the Outlander, who was largely speculated to be the hero of Titan, his son Arkan and Valen, three of the most powerful beings to ever exist. Vishiot was able to unleash tyrannical barrages of force lightning and force storms, being able to incinerate his enemies at the height of their power, very similar to Palpatine's ability. Vishiot was able to conjure Sith alchemy, and upon completing the ritual of Nathema, gained entirely absolute godhood, making his spirit immortal. Vishiot was able to conjure essence transfer ability and change vessels, doing this with Valkorion, his original body Tenebrae, and the Sith Emperor form. Vishiot truly lived the longest life of any Sith, 
and had more alchemy prowess than possibly any Sith to ever live. However, he just pales in comparison to this legend's character, the most powerful Jedi of all time, coming in at the number two position, narrowly missing man on the number one. We have Grandmaster Luke Skywalker. Grandmaster Luke Skywalker is widely considered to be the most powerful Jedi of all time. Grandmaster Luke Skywalker was able to decimate armies with a force push, had the ability to use emerald lightning during war, was able to absolutely plow through Yuzong Vong soldiers, soldiers who were incredibly immune to the force in its entirety, besides force lightning. Luke Skywalker had mastered all seven forms of lightsaber combat and even pioneered new ones, teaching them to the Jedi Praxium. Luke Skywalker was able to defeat Darth Sidious in combat multiple times, who is ranked number four on this list, and had the ability to become the most powerful Jedi alive, something we on the channel believe he ultimately succeeded in. He was also able to duel the Eldritch Abomination of the Dark Side Abeloth, 100,000 year old entity, and almost defeat her single handedly multiple times. However, her powers clearly surpassed his own. 12 times more powerful she was than even the Grand Master. He was able to duel and widely considered to be the superior to Darth Kray, who was ranked number 5 on this list. Luke Skywalker had some of the most tremendous accolades, such as being able to. Pinning his nephew, Darth Kytus, who is ranked number 10 on this list, to a chair seemingly without effort. He also had the ability to plow through Yuzong Vong soldiers and fight 1,000 year old Avaloth, a tyrannical and very powerful dark side entity. Luke Skywalker states his claim as one of the most powerful Star Wars characters of all time. But coming in at the number one position, we have the Lord of Hunger and the bringer of all hate, the literal living wound in the Force, Darth Nihilus. Darth Nihilus was described by both Visa Smart and Mitra Suruk, two of the most powerful beings of their age, to have his power be considered beyond comprehension. He was able to drain multiple planets of their life, instigating the first Jedi purge, purging the galaxy along with Darth Sion of all the Jedi. Darth Nihilus was able to drain Qatar, including 100 members of the Jedi Order, widely considered to be the remainder of the Jedi Order, except for a bare minimum, such as Mitra Surik and Actress. Darth Nihilus' save skills were not his strong suit, but it made up for it with his tyrannical force abilities. He was able, when he spoke, to cause the pain and suffering of others, to induce force plague and force slow, allowing their moves to be sloppy for him to instantly kill. He was able to lift his flagship, Hit the Ravager and form his glow fleet from the orbit of Malakor using telekinesis, a feat that can only be comparable to that of Grandmaster Yoda's, who was ranked number seven on this list. Darth Nihilus was so powerful he became more of an entity of the dark side, so like the Sun or Abeloth, than a normal Sith Lord. Darth Nihilus's body eventually decayed and deteriorated, eventually exploding with his incredible dark side power, having to bind using alchemy his spirit to his mask, armor, and robes. Darth Nihilus only retained a corporeal form to use his lightsaber during duels and sparring sessions. Darth Nihilus, in my opinion, is the most powerful Star Wars entity of all time. Well, my friends, that was the top 10 most powerful dark side entities, powerful beings in the Star Wars galaxy. Be sure to ensure that you have stricken down the subscribe button and decimated it. Use the force to electrify the like button as it is your destiny if you wish to ascend to the rank of master. I will do a video covering the most powerful force entities, such as the ones of Mortis, the Wills, the Force Priestesses, the Neutral Bendu, the Bedlam Spirits, the World Razor, and many, many more shall be present in that ranking. I'll rank them from most powerful to least powerful. Leave your comments in the comment section below if I've missed any characters and share your ranking. After all, it is a top 10 video and I'd be surprised if anybody agreed with me fully. But I hope that you have agreed that my list is the most comprehensive on YouTube thus far. I truly desire to present my apprehension and view on two of the 10 most powerful non-entity Star Wars characters. Nihilus may have prevailed as the number one on my list, but your list may have been completely different. Share it in the comment section below. With that intersection out of the way, acolytes, I hope you have enjoyed opening up our database yet again and exploring this vast page of our archive. Be sure to subscribe and in tune in our channel by hitting the notification bell for more unveiling and unopening of holocrons. Goodbye, acolytes, and I hope you are not on the receiving end of the Lord of Hunger today.